If you have been thinking about upgrading your camera for your online presentations, you probably have a lot of questions and that's because there are so many options. But one of the primary questions you're probably thinking is, do I get more of a webcam or an actual camera to connect my video source? And I think that's a really important question and this is why I'm making the video so we can actually compare. Now, one of the ways this is really easy for me is that I've made a few changes in my studio. I've actually changed up the main camera that I'm using and I've also added in a webcam. Now I added in the webcam for sort of two reasons. One, portability. I knew I was doing some travel and I still needed to run some Zoom sessions, but also it's nice to have a backup option or to have an overhead view, just a little bit more flexibility when it comes to filming. So today we're going to look at a side-by-side -side comparison. I'm also gonna go through what I think are some of the advantages and disadvantages for both the webcam and the camera so that you have a little bit of better sense of maybe what are some things to consider when you're buying a camera. So let's start off with first, what am I using right now? So right now I'm using the Sony ZV-E10 and I have a Sigma 16 millimeter F 1.4 lens. So I have had this camera for a while, but I have actually switched it off. So for a very long time, years, I was using this Sony ZV-1. It treated me well, I was really happy with it, but eventually I got to the point where I actually wanted a little bit more of that blurred background, and that's that bokeh effect, where you have a really low f-stop, that f1.4 means that the subject stays in focus, but the rest of the image is blurred. And that is how we get that, it's by having that low f-stop. Now, on the flip side, my webcam, this is the Insta360 Link. I picked this up a few months ago so that I had this on the road for travel, but also have it set up on my desk. And right now I have them set up side by side. So there are slightly different angles when you compare the two cameras. And in fact, let's see what I am looking at. This is a live feed where you can see I've got the webcam right here and it's illuminated green because it's in use. And then I also have my Sony directly in front of me. And I know it's hard to make it out, but if I kind of put my hand here, you can make out the shape of the webcam a little bit better beside the black. So let's do a side by side. Okay, here are both cameras. I have them both connected at the same time so that you can see what the difference is. And I obviously can't look at the same lens at the same time, so I can kind of switch between or maybe stare between the two. But what you will notice, I think the biggest difference is if we look over my shoulder at the throw pillows, in the case of the, the link, the webcam, everything in the room is in focus versus if we are looking at the Sony, you will notice that the background has that blurred effect. You'll also notice there are differences just with image quality. I find that the webcam has just a slightly softer look to it versus the Sony, which definitely has th that image quality. To me, it's just sharper. It's just a higher quality when I'm looking at the two side by side. So let's actually run down what are some of the advantages and disadvantage or pros and cons to both the webcam and to the camera. So let's start with the webcam and that's what you're seeing right now is my webcam. Some of the advantages or the pros of using a webcam. First of all, it is more affordable if you're comparing these two options. When you look at cameras and webcams, even though some of the newer webcams are going up in price, that is because they are getting higher quality picture, so many more options now with HD and 4K, but also more settings and features that come along with it. So there's definitely, it runs a big span of different price points, but overall it's probably going to be less expensive than buying a camera. Now the other thing is that there's a plug and play option, as in you plug it into your computer and it's ready to go. If your computer's on, your webcam is ready. If you sign into a meeting, you can pick your webcam. It's just really, really simple. You don't have to fuss and muss and figure out all of the settings and watch YouTube videos on how to do it. The other thing is that it is powered by your computer. So again, if your computer's on, your webcam is on. It's just simple that way. And it's really light. You can just put it on the top of your monitor or if you want, you can mount it, but it just makes it so easy for almost anyone's setup to get your webcam locked and loaded really quickly. And then many of the new options do have some features like AI gestures, so you can actually adjust your settings, like zooming in and zooming out with the webcam, and you can do those with hand gestures, but also they have things like tracking if you wanna stay in the center, 
it will stay and keep you in the center. So those are some of the advantages. There might be more that I'm not explaining, but let's take a look at some of the cons to the webcam. One is just when it comes to camera effects. So how the camera actually looks, getting things like a shallow depth of field, you're just going to have limitations that you don't have on a full camera. The other thing is that depending on the webcam, you might need to be running extra software. And if you are someone who's trying to keep it light, meaning you don't wanna to run too many applications at the same time, especially if you have an older computer, that could be something to keep in mind. Do you have to have the software open or not? So for in most cases, you just plug in the webcam and it is ready to be used. Now tracking distractions, personally, I don't love when a camera tracks a subject and it really depends on how close they are. If someone is close to the camera and every time they move, the camera moves, I find that distracting as a viewer. If Whereas if you're further away, maybe you're kind of walking around a space, you're drawing on a whiteboard, I actually then like if it tracks the person who is speaking. But that is something to consider when it comes to the tracking features. And then also AI mistakes. Frankly, <laughs> I have accidentally just been talking with my hands and suddenly triggered some settings I didn't even know was happening. And that to me was, it just pulled my attention away completely. I didn't really know what was going on and I just wasn't expecting it. So that's just something to consider when it comes to the gestures and the settings. I've also had it where the settings will sometimes reset. Even as I've been preparing to film this video, I've had to reset the settings for how I've angled and zoomed in and out on the Insta360 software. And to me, that's that's frustrating. <laughs> there are presets, but going in and having to choose the preset, that's kind of annoying. Okay, now let's take a look at the camera. So camera, the advantages or the pros, really, I think it's the quality of the picture. When you are using a full camera as your video source for your presentations, people notice, people will, you know, send me a message saying, what camera are you using? Your picture looks great. And I do think there is a noticeable difference personally. That's my opinion. It also does have the advantage if you have the right lens that has that really low number f-stop and that shallow depth of field, then you can get that blurred background, which a lot of people really like that aesthetic. And more and more cameras have USB compatibility, making it easier than ever to just connect your camera. For example, the camera I'm using right now, the Sony ZV-E10 and also the Sony ZV-1 have the option to plug in directly to your, to your computer using USB, which is a great option. Because if we take a look at some of the cons or disadvantages, one is that you might need a capture card. There are many cameras out there on the market that require an adapter in order for the source to become visible. So an example of one, I've got here a Camlink 4K. This is an HDMI on one end, and then you plug it into your device. And this just makes the source visible. You'll want to check not every single camera is compatible with a capture card, and therefore you might not be able to use just any camera. So you may need to also purchase an additional capture card or adapter. There are all sorts of different capture cards. And if you're wondering, what am I using right now? I am using the capture card that is part of the Rode Streamer X right now for this for this video. The other thing is that you also have to consider it needs a mount because you're not just gonna balance this on the top of a monitor, it's going to have to be mounted somehow. If you have one fixed studio space, not a problem because you can just set it up once and leave it. But that is an, an additional consideration. So you might have to buy a capture card, you might also have to buy a mount. Now the other thing is that it does require power. For some people, they might buy a dummy battery, which you fit in the, the battery slot, but it's actually connected to an external source. Or if you have a camera like mine, the one I'm using right now, or the Sony, you can see here, if I maybe hold it up, that there is an option to just power this. So I will connect this to power directly. And that's how I have been doing my setup for a while. However, that leads to the last thing on the list, which is a really important point. And that is that these cameras can overheat and then shut off. And yes, I have been on calls where the camera just shut off because I had been just using it too long. I didn't pay attention to how long the camera had been running and it was, it was done. <laughs> it's like it's signing out for the day. It is done. And I have seen people with these beautiful setups, their camera looks gorgeous. They're running a call and then their video feed just goes. 
and then they have to switch to another camera, maybe their built-in camera, all of a sudden the quality looks totally different and it's a really jarring experience for you as the person who's trying to keep things running, suddenly you, you lose your camera. So that is something to consider if you are on calls all day long or you're running really long sessions where you have to be on camera, you really wanna think about the considerations because having your camera shut off, it's no good, it's no good. Okay, what are some questions I think you should ask yourself? And actually, let's just first come to the conclusion that the higher the quality of the picture, the higher maintenance in general we're speaking, meaning a little bit more friction and things to consider. So first and foremost, a question I think you should ask yourself is how much do you actually care about the blurred background or the bokeh? If this is really important to you, the best way to get it is definitely a camera. That's just hands down, having the right lens is going to get this effect. So if it really matters, camera with the proper lens. The next thing to consider is your overall budget. And I say overall because if you just buy a webcam, that's your expense, you're done. If you buy a camera, you might also have to then have the added expense of buying a capture card and also mounting options. So you just have to consider that. And depending on the camera, you might have to get a different lens. So in my case, I removed the kit lens and I have a different lens. So that also had to factor into the overall cost. So just keep that in mind. Personally for me, because I knew I wanted to go to a camera. So this, this was my original camera. I think it was 90 bucks. I don't even know how long ago. I knew I wanted to get the Sony, the ZV-1 in particular. And instead of buying an interim, like a slightly better webcam, I just waited a little bit longer, saved a bit more money until I could afford this one. And that was my option instead of kind of jumping. But if a webcam is right for you, then you don't have to worry about adding on those extra expenses. The next question I think you should ask is around portability. If you are someone who will not always be in the same space, maybe you have to move between offices or home and office, or you're on the road a lot, you might just prefer having a webcam and not having to worry about lugging around a camera. In fact, when I traveled to a conference recently and I had to run a call, I had both options available and I actually really wanted to set up the Sony, but I realized that the way that the room was positioned, I wanted to get the best light, I couldn't actually reach the power source for the camera. So the webcam won out because the webcam was just plugged into the computer and it was powered appropriately. Finally, not finally, second last is, how are you gonna use it? How long do you need your camera to be on? If you are doing really long calls or just long days of being on camera a lot, probably the webcam is gonna be better so you don't risk overheating. I know there are times when I've had really long days of being on camera and I make sure I turn it off at lunch so that I have enough power and it kind of cools down. But again, that's that higher maintenance, that trade-off that you are making. And then finally, this is what I would say, is just what is your personal toler tolerance for friction? Even something like I have to reach over and turn on and off the camera. I can't just have it turn on when the computer is on. This is something I need to turn on and off. And today, as you saw, I'm just, I just have the camera in front of me. Typically, I have this, a teleprompter. And with the teleprompter, that means I also have to reach over the teleprompter to turn on and off the camera. That is a source of friction. And for some people, honestly, just be, having to turn it on and off is a pain and they would much rather the simplicity of having just a high quality webcam. If I just had a webcam sitting back here, it would just be ready to go as soon as my computer's on, I don't have to worry. I never have to reach over and touch it. And in fact, before when I was using this camera, it had to be on a little ledge, which meant I was using the, I had the little shroud over it to keep it dark. And that meant I, I just memorized where the button was and I would feel for it and press it through the shroud. So these are just little things that in my experience, they should be factored into what the right purchase is for you and what is your tolerance for friction. What's really nice though, is there are so many options now and there are really high quality webcams. If you really feel like you're leaning a bit more webcam, there are some great options. If you have the budget and you really care about that camera quality and that blurred background, then probably the camera is the direction that you're want wanting to go. But either way, whatever you choose, 
that will help you to run more professional, engaging, and seamless virtual presentations.